We're at a theme park to solve your medical mysteries. Zond is preparing the Ouchmobile for his first patient. And Chris is out in the park to answer your burning questions. Wow, I'm impressed. At the clinic, Zond is open for business. Can I have the next patient, please? Aye, aye. It's double trouble. Siblings, 11-year-old Harry and 8-year-old Maya. So, Harry, Maya, why have you come to the Ouchmobile? I've come because I've got a squint in my right eye. And I've got a squint in my eye. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds like a case of I've got a squint in my right eye and I've got a squint in my eye-itis. I agree. Can you open the eyelid and we'll see if we can see it? It's quite hard to see, but it is visible. Maya's right eye is wandering off a little bit when she looks up. It's not quite pointing in the same direction as her left eye. Now, Harry, can you make it happen? Oh, yeah, look at that. What kind of things have you done for the squint? I've had to do these eye exercises. I've had to have patch therapy, which is putting a patch over my eye. That's been quite annoying. Do you guys have any questions for me? So what's actually happening inside your eye? The problem is that one eye isn't working as well as the other eye, and that means the brain decides to ignore the image from one eye and concentrate on the good eye, at which point it stops controlling the muscles around your eye and it begins to wander off. Well, thank you very much for bringing your amazing eyes to the Ouchmobile. Thank you. Thank you. Away from the clinic, Chris is out and about answering your burning questions. Why do you get shorter during the day? What do you mean? You're tallest when you wake up and then yeah. as you walk around all day you get shorter? Yeah. That's a really good question. Because between each one of your vertebra, which is the bones in your spine, you've got a jelly-like disc. And over the course of the day, that gets squeezed and it gets shorter and shorter and shorter. Dinesh, why did you care about whether or not you were shrinking at a theme park? Because of the height restrictions. Oh, so you can go on the rides? Yeah. Can I have the next patient, please? Back at the Ouchmobile are brothers 10-year-old William and 8-year-old Callum. So, William, Callum, why have you come to the Ouchmobile? Because we've got bendy fingers, fingers and we can stick our shoulder, shoulder blade out. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds like a case of we've got bendy fingers and I can stick my shoulder blade out. Itis! Easy for you to say. So, William, can you open up the eyelid on the Ouch can? OK, now let's have a look. So, that's amazing. Both Callum and William have got what we call hypermobile joints, meaning they've got a bigger range of motion than most other people do. So, William, can we have a look at your shoulder blades? <laughs> oh, wow. So, put it back and then pop them out again. So, can you do the same thing, Callum? Yes. Have you got any questions about that for me? Why can we do it? The reason that you can do it is probably because you've got very stretchy collagen. And collagen is the molecule that holds your whole body together. It's your body's equivalent, really, of elastic bands. So some people are held together by, if you like, very strong elastic bands, and then you guys are held together by much more stretchy elastic bands. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. William, Callum, thanks very much for bringing your amazing bodies to the Ouchmobile. It was great, thanks. Job done for today. Clinic closed. We're at a theme park to solve your medical mysteries. Zond is preparing the Ouchmobile for his first patient. And Chris is out in the park to answer your burning questions. Wow, I'm impressed. At the clinic, Zond is open for business. Can I have the next patient, please? First in is eight-year-old Elliot, who's had treatment for a curious condition. Elliot, what's brought you to the Ouchmobile today? Well, I have yellow and rough hands and I did have a pink tongue and big red lips. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds to me like a case of I've got yellow and rough hands and I used to have a pink tongue and red lipsitis. Doc, designed it's called Kawasaki disease. It is called Kawasaki disease, isn't it? Yeah. And it is a real itis, isn't it? Yeah. So Kawasaki disease is a very rare disease. Only about 
eight in a hundred thousand people get it. Kawasaki is serious, but Elliot's recovering well after treatment. So if you look at the palm of Elliot's hand, it looks like it's a bit grubby, but that's not actually because your hands are dirty, are they? They're clean. Yeah. So what Elliot's got is a thing called desquamation. And that means the cells on the surface of his skin are dying more than in other people's hands. And those cells have a chemical called keratin in, and the keratin, as the cell dies, goes yellow. How long does it last? Normally, it lasts a few weeks, maybe a few months. It's quite common for people to have symptoms that go on longer than the illness. But in the long term, we'd expect you to make a full recovery. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for bringing Kawasaki disease to the Ouchmobile. Thank you. Away from the clinic, Chris is out and about in the park. Why is it that some people can curl their tongue and others can't? So, of you two, who can curl their tongue? Both of us. You yeah. both can, show me. We're not exactly sure of how it works, but it seems to be genetic. So you're born able to do it or not able to do it. And people who can't do it can never, ever learn to do it. So if you look at your parents, one of them will be able to. That's where you Yeah, got. Dad can, but Mum can't. Really? Yeah. OK, so yeah, so you both inherited it from your dad. Thank, Thank you, Dr Chris. That's a pleasure. Can I have the next patient, please? Back at the Ouchmobile, 10-year-old Izzy's chompers need checking. So, Izzy, why have you come to the Ouchmobile? I've got an out-of-place tooth. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds to me like a case of I've got an out-of-place tooth-itis. Tooth-tastic. Now, how long have you had the tooth out-of-place for? About two years. Can we have a better look at it? Can you open the eyelid on the Ouch cam? Now, it's an adult tooth, right? Uh-huh. Now, does it bother you having the tooth be wonky? Not really. Do you have any questions about the tooth? Why is it wonky in the first place? There are all kinds of reasons why it might be wonky. But one of the reasons is that your mouth is too crowded. And if your teeth get crowded, then some of them just get pushed out of the way to kind of make room for the others. Will it go back naturally or with braces? It might go back naturally, and we don't know with your mouth yet because you've still got a lot of your baby teeth and you've only got a small number of adult teeth. But I think it's most likely that you'd need braces to kind of get it right back in exactly the correct position. Yeah. Well, Izzy, thank you very much for bringing your amazing wonky teeth to the Ouchmobile. So, hey. Job done for today. Clinic closed. <laughs> Sometimes things don't always heal exactly as planned, as our next patient found out. We're at a theme park to solve your medical mysteries. Zand is preparing the Ouchmobile for his first patient. And I'll also be out in the park answering your burning questions. That's amazing! At the clinic, Zand is open for business. Next patient, please. First in is 10-year-old Anna with a funny finger. That's amazing! Seems perfectly obvious why you've come to the Ouchmobile. That's nothing. Look at my little finger. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Looks to me like a case of my little finger's even more amazing than the trick I can do with my other finger's itis. Wow. <laughs> Tell me about your little finger, Anna. It started when I was five years old. My mum told me to open the door and it, the door just, like, hit it and it cracked. Painful. Mm-hmm. So what happened then? The doctor put this um, straight thing on me to make it, like, stay straight, but it didn't work. So, Anna, I want to have a closer look at your finger. Can you open the eyelid on the ouch cam? Brilliant. Now, get it as straight as you can. <laughs> That's all you can do, is it? Yeah. <laughs> So the doctor used something called a splint, and the splint is meant to hold a broken bone straight until it mends. And in your case, the splint didn't work. It's nothing to worry about. Does the finger work well for you, or would you prefer to have it straightened out? It doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, that's really good. Well, I have to do an operation when I go old, older. In the future, if you started to get ache in the joints, or you did a job where you needed to do something very precise with your left hand, at that point, you might think about doing an operation. And it certainly is possible to straighten out that finger. Well, thank you very much for coming to the Ouchmobile. You're welcome. Time to get out of the Ouchmobile and into the park. I want to see if anyone's got any questions for me. Let's go out and about. Why does uh, your belly rumble when you're hungry? In fact, it can rumble at any time. But when you're eating, you swallow bits of air. And when you're digesting food, it actually makes gas. And the rumbling is the bubbles bubbling up through the stuff you've eaten. And the name is Borobarygnes. 
So the next time you're getting rumbling, you can go, oh, I've just got a bit of borobarygmy going on. <laughs> Back at the Altramobile, the next case is in the waiting room. Can I have the next patient, please? It's 12-year-old Carnell with an extraordinary eye. So, Carnell, what's brought you to the Altramobile? Uh, when I drink, my eye sort of wanders off. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds to me like a case of when I drink, my eye sort of wanders off itis. I know what you mean. Now, tell me more about that. It's called Marcus Scun syndrome. Now, that is a very, very rare syndrome indeed. So, in all the things ever published about medicine, there are only 300 people reported to have had it. Can you open the eye on the ouch cam? Now, can you give us a demonstration of what happens? I can't see it. Now, can you try wiggling your jaw from side to side like that? It's not easy to see, but Carnell's eyelid is twitching from side to side. That's because the bit of his brain that's making his jaw move is also telling his eyelid to move. And does it affect your life at all? No, not really, because not much people notice it. As a doctor, it is very interesting to see someone with a syndrome this rare. Carnell, thank you very much for coming and showing us your amazing eye in the Ouchmobile. OK, thank you, Dr Zan. Job done for today. Clinic closed. <laughs> We're at a theme park to solve your medical mysteries. Zand is preparing the clinic ready for his first patient. And Chris is ouch and about in the park to answer your burning questions. Wow, I'm impressed. At the clinic, Zand is open for business. Next patient, please. First in is nine-year-old Poppy with an interesting ailment. So, Poppy, what have you come to see us for? I got some strange red spots on my face and my arms. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds like a case of I've got some strange red spots on my face and my arms itis. Spot on. Now let's have a look at them. I've got the ouch cam here, and I can see it right there on your face. Do you think it looks like a spider? A little bit. Well, in fact, it's called a spider nevus because some people say it looks a little bit like a spider. It's got little blood vessels coming out of it so you can kind of see spider's legs. So, the blood vessels that are supplying blood to your skin, one of them's got a bit big and it's bringing more blood than it should to the skin. And so all the tiny blood vessels in your skin, called capillaries, have got a bit bigger and so they're a bit more red. So you said you had some other red spots. Can you show me those? Oh, OK, so you've got two on your arm right there. I've got two almost in exactly the same place. Now, those are actually a different kind of red spot called a Campbell de Morgan spot. They're also completely normal. Almost everyone has got some of those. How can I get rid of them? The one on your face, sometimes when you just get older, they go away. If it doesn't go away, there are two things you can do. One is you can get a doctor to stick a needle in it, and that'll make it bleed a little bit, and then it'll go away, and it doesn't hurt very much at all. And the other way of getting rid of them is with a laser. But for you, it's completely normal. They're completely common. And I'll tell you one famous person who's got one, Dr Chris. Poppy, thank you very much for coming to the Ouchmobile today. Thank you, Dr Sand. Away from the clinic, Chris is ouch and about in the park. Archer, what's your question? How do you get a wobbly tooth? Do you know that below all your baby teeth, you've got grown-up teeth already in your jaw? and they're growing through. And as they grow through, they push the baby teeth out, and that's why it gets wobbly. A really good question. Thank you, Archer. Thanks, Dr Chris. Back at the Ouchmobile are siblings 8-year-old Charlotte and 11-year-old James. So, Charlotte, James, why have you come to the Ouchmobile? When I stand up, I have a gap in between my knees and I can't put them together. But I can. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Oh, sounds to me like it's a case of I've got a gap between my knees when I stand up and I can't put them together, but I can itis. Easy for you to say. Well, let's find out more about this. Now, Charlotte, can you open the lid on the ouch cam? Now, stand up and show me your knees. Oh, wow. Your feet are close together. Mm -hmm. But as we move up, your knees are wide apart. Now, that is completely different to your brother whose knees are touching. How does this happen? The answer, really, is that we don't know. I can tell you what's happened is that your bones have grown slightly differently, so we call that a varus 
change in your knees. Now, what you've really got is normal knees that are a bit, bit further apart than some other people's knees, and other people have got knees that knock together a little bit more. The way that your bones grow is controlled in quite a complicated way. And so you can just get a variation where for some people it grows slightly differently. So your brother's grown with his knees close together and you've grown differently. Now you're still growing and your leg bones are still growing. So possibly as Charlotte gets older, the gap between your knees will shrink. Does that make sense? Yeah. Charlotte, James, thank you very much for bringing your amazing knees to the Ouchmobile. Thank, thank you, Dr. Dr. Zahn. Job done for today. Clinic closed. Ouch. And now we're heading out and about for our puberty special. At the clinic, Chris is open for business. Next patient, please. First in is 10-year-old Samantha with some mystery marks. So, Sam, what brings you to the Ouchmobile today? I have some interesting stretch marks on my leg. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds like a case of I've got some interesting stretch marks on my legs, itis. But don't panic. So, Sam, open the eyelid. So, why don't you stand up and see if you can show us the stretch marks? Oh, yeah, OK. You've got some streaks here, and they're a little bit darker, aren't they? The reason you get them is when you reach puberty, a lot of people start to grow very, very quickly. That dark bit is where you've pulled the skin fibres apart, so where the skin is a bit thinner, and you can see through to the, the darker skin underneath. So there's nothing to worry about. Everyone has stretch marks. I have them, and I have them in almost exactly the same place, and it's very, very common. Is there anything I can do to get rid of them? There are some creams that you can get. So there's a, a vitamin E cream. It doesn't work for everyone, but putting some vitamin E on them may help a bit. But as you get older, they may well just get much lighter and you might not notice them. Thank you very much for bringing your interesting stretch marks in to see me. Thank you, Dr Chris, for having me. Away from the clinic, Zand is in the park taking questions about growing up. Why am I getting clumsier as I get older? What sort of things do you get wrong? I always trip over my own face. As you get bigger, your arms and legs are getting longer, and it's hard to know where they are because you're used to them being a bit shorter. Once you stop growing, you kind of get used to it, but I'm still quite clumsy. Dr Chris is really clumsy. <laughs> so the next time you get told off for knocking things over, you've got the perfect excuse. It's just puberty. Back at the Elchmobile, there's a new case in the waiting room. Next patient, please. It's double trouble. Cousins Rhea and Cyrus. So, guys, what brings you to the Elchmobile today? Me and Cyrus are both the same age, so 12, but I am a lot taller than him. What's the diagnosis, Doc? This sounds like a serious case of me and Cyrus are exactly the same age, 12, but I am a lot taller than him, itis. But don't panic. Now, let's see how much taller you are. And you stand up. Cyrus, do you want to stand up next to Rhea? So this is how tall Rhea is, and this is how tall Cyrus is. You're about a head shorter. Yeah. And you're exactly the same age. Yeah. Have a seat. So, what do you want to know about this? I want to know why boys have their growth spurts later than girls. We don't know why boys start later, but girls can start kind of age 10 to 12, and boys tend to start more like 12 to 14, 15. So that's because your body starts releasing a hormone called testosterone. It's testosterone that makes both boys and girls have this sudden growth spurt. What's it like being shorter than your 12-year-old female cousin? Um, it's beat him up all the time. Ugh, <laughs> man. I remember that. I remember getting beaten up by girls at age 12. Thank you very much, Dr. Chris. That is a real pleasure. If you haven't had your growth spurt yet, don't panic. Everyone's different. It will come. Clinic closed.